How's it going guys and welcome to our spectacular knife weekend. We are sitting down with Spyderco right now and we have got Eric Glasser himself. How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good man, really, really good. We're so grateful you were able to take some time and uh, run us through some of these new knives that you guys, pretty much everything's been released and seen but we haven't been able to touch yet. So it's exciting to sit down with you and uh, kind of get the skinny on everything. Yeah, thanks for having us. So I'll go through our Reveal 5 product. Most of this product should be delivered fairly soon. Some of people might have seen them in prototype cases at various shows. Um, but if you're looking at it today, it should be coming pretty soon. Cool. Right on. So, yeah, let's kick it off. We've got kind of a cool, kind of smaller, mid-sized lockback knife. What's the story on this one? Uh, that one's the Spy Opera. It's a collaboration with Lion Steel out of Italy, uh, out of Maniago. It's always a pleasure to get to work with Lion Steel on these beautiful projects. This is going to come with a canvas micarta. It's a mid back lock. Um, it comes with M390 blade steel. It comes with a wire clip. Um, I actually have the, the version they make called the Opera here. And you'll notice that theirs does not have the spidey hole. So that's one of the big changes is it's a little bit spiderized. And then we added the wire clip. Um, but it's very much a, a max design from Lion Spy that's been spiderized. Cool. Um, the lockback brings great quality, so it's good to find a good lockback maker. Um, the lockback on this, too, has a very nice rounded top, nice rounded spine on the blade, so that when you're carrying it and using it, it just feels great in the hand. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful craftsmanship coming out of Maniago. Yeah, that was one thing that popped out to me right out of the gate was, yeah, how just how rounded the spine was, the lockback, everything. It gives it a really neat touch, right? Like it's uh, obviously very Spyderco, but feels just a little different. So it's 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 cool to see that collaboration come through that way. Yeah, and with the canvas micarta, it's not a really high polish, so it feels good on the thumb. It's got some mm -hmm. nice custom hardware there too. And yeah, it feels great in the hand. It's a, it's a high quality piece. A nice cool. uh, customized lander. Uh, that pops out of the end there a little bit. So yeah, beautiful nice piece. Always love working with lion, lion steel. Um, now the next one up on the table. Speaking of of beautiful little pieces, this one's caught a lot of eyes. This is kind of a unique, a very unique piece. Um, and I keep saying the name wrong. So so introduce us to the name and and tell us a little bit about this thing. Okay, this is the pochi. Uh, pochi. It's designed pochi. by Kazayu Kazayuki Sakurai uh, out of Japan. Most of his knives um, have that animal flair to it, so this has the look of a puppy. Um, very high quality piece, though. If you know Spyderco's, though, it is very cute, but it's also user friendly. Um, so this one, it does have a, a reeve integral lock. Um, so when you unlock it, you can close it, and the hole is nicely exposed on both sides for both right and left hand open. Um, it does have a little flipper on there, and it is a little knife, so if you're going to flip it, you got to give it a little bit of a pop, um, but you can flip it. It's got foster bronze inside. It's got a custom titanium clip. It's got a titanium tail, um, and then it's got a titanium cap here that your over travel stop so that the lock doesn't over travel. Now the tail here is kind of nice. When you do open it, you can kind of pull the tail out a little bit and get another third finger on there. Um, Interesting. If you can see. I, yeah, so I was it, wondering. Know, I was wondering what the tail was about, to be honest. <laughs> so that's cool it was, that it's 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 not only uh, completes the visual design of the knife, but also there's some practical application there as well. Yeah, you know, the, the big guard in the front and the guard in the back, you know, it's going to hold onto the hand. But if you had just two fingers on it, it's really not enough to, to fully control. That third finger gives it a little bit more leverage. Um, this also comes in a CPM 45VN. It's kind of one of the newer steels that Crucible is pushing these days. It's a beautiful steel to work with. Um, it's got a bead blasted finish and then we do a high polish here um, on these little uh, facets to give it a, a nice little look. It's got a little paw print on the clip. You know, when you get it in your hands, there's there's beautiful little touches that make it special. You know, the, the flipper is all rounded on the edges. Um, very high quality piece. Yeah, no, and that's the thing is is for such a small knife, it, it's, it, it packs a big punch in design, right? Like there's so many little things from, you know, the, the little accents in the pocket clip to the over travel stop uh, to the little tail that is also, I've just learned, you know, for to expand the grip of the knife. Uh, just a really neat, really, really neat piece. What, you know, Spyderco works in a lot of fun, interesting designs. I guess what inspires you guys to, to put out a design like this? 
Well, the first thing is you need something that's going to be performance based. We're not going to make anything that doesn't perform. And so that has to be has to be good steals, good locks. You know, when you put this in your pocket and you carry it, most of these, you know, corners fold up. You don't have a lot of beaks sticking out. Um, but, you know, it's it's a balance of making um, high quality products in all shapes and sizes. One of the questions I get frequently is what can you do new to a knife? Um, and there's so much new you can do. And so, you know, this this brings a lot of fun flair to it. Sometimes we make knives that are more tactical. You're going to see those later. And sometimes we make cuter knives for just about everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like that you're not scared to call it cute because it's definitely a cute knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah, it, it also, really is. Also, another little factor is it, it stands up. Uh, that's kind yeah. of popular in Japan too, where you can stand it on a on a table and the edge is off the table and you're not dirtying the knife. Um, so if you do want to set it down, it just kind of stands on a table quite quite nicely. That's cool. I did know that it that it would stand on the table, but I actually was unaware that there's actually some cultural influence there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so <laughs> kind of stepping out of that realm of just something fun and cute, uh, kind of going uh, back back into your guys' more standard wheel, wheelhouse, we've got a lightweight version here, right? Yep. This is the lightweight Native 5. Uh, what we're doing with this is we're highlighting the Spy 27 steel. This is a steel we worked with Crucible on to try to develop that was a cobalt-based steel. Um, so it's a powdered metal. It's got great edge retention, great corrosion resistance. It's a tough steel. Um, and then we have a unique blue to kind of highlight the steel. So like we do on our 110Bs and some of our other knives, um, we gave it a special color. The Native 5 is just tested and true. Four-way clip, jimping, bi-directional texturing, reliable lock, full flat grind. It works great in the hand, great carry for the pocket. Uh, the Native we've been producing now, this is the fifth evolution. And after 20 years, it just you know continues to get better and better. Yeah, it really is a great little knife, and cool to see it in a lightweight version, um, and cool to see it with your guys with with the steel that you guys have been, um, you know, uh, spearheading with Crucible. Um, where does where does the spy steel fall? Kind of, you know, you, you got your 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 S thirties and your M nine M three nineties and your whatevers. In your opinion, kind of, where does the spy steel land? Um. I guess that's a great question. First of all, I like to premise it with everybody's opinion seems to be always a little bit different. Um, that's that's the case know. with steels, right? It's nobody's ever right, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's why we make so many different. We give them different bevels. We make different steels. We give it the customer the opportunity to try it for themselves. As a basis, though, it's right in that family. It's going to compete with most of those other steels you're saying. And for us, we're always looking at corrosion resistance, toughness, and, and wear, wear resistance, um, edge retention. And so, you know, it, it holds up really nice. I, I believe that after working with it a while, it's really clean. Um, and that's just a personal opinion. Um, but as far as performance goes, it's right in that family of steels that you're already mentioning. Most of the family of steels, the M390s, S30Vs, Cell 20CVs, they're all in the upper end already. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now you're, you're really talking about minor changes compared to some of the lower grade steels, but, uh, I certainly think it, it keeps up with most of the high grade steels today. Cool. Right on. Um, all right. And then you, you kind of mentioned some bevels and some things of that nature, which kind of takes us into, uh, this next one, which the name literally just eluded me. Uh, Canis. Canis, there it is. Yeah, yeah, Canis. Yeah. <laughs> Designed by Kelly McCann. Um, I'm excited about this knife. Um, the bevel that you mentioned, I, I do love these bevels, and I'll try to zoom up on it, but there's this mid-bevel that comes out um, right ab above this main bevel for the edge. This is so that you have a lot re less resistance when you're traveling through something, um, but you also have the strength and the width of your blade. Um, and because it plunges back out at the tip, you have a lot of strength here at the tip. Um, getting these these to plunge in, come across, and plunge back out, be nice and consistent and clean. Um, it's not an easy grind to do in production, but it, it does bring some, some good performance. Um, and that's just one of the special features on the knife. Um, you know, for this knife, he's got some great jimping up here. It's gonna it's gonna capture the thumb well. Um, he's, he uh, has a nice guard here so that you're not going to slide up on the knife. 
it's peel ply carbon fiber. It's um, three screw mount clip. It's screw together construction with its compression lock. You're talking about a high performance, well functional, quick piece. Uh, when you get into you know these performance knives, and I know I've talked about some of these things before, but but Kelly knows what he's doing. You know whether you're looking at the next knife we're going to go over, which is also a self defense piece. You're talking about, in my opinion, some of the greatest out there, and so. You know, this is the knife that they created out of years and years of uh, perfecting their art form. I, I always like to highlight these um, Warren Cliffs that we produce. Um, I'm very proud of them. They're very straight. They have a nice crisp tip. Um, at the back, too, they, they plunge in and go straight across all the way to the tip very nicely. I know that with a Warren Cliff, a lot of people would love to have a little ch ch uh, um, choil there so that it's a little bit easier to sharpen. But when you're dealing with a self-defense uh, product like this one, the last thing you need is a, is a little choil there catching stuff. Um, and so you can really choke up on this edge, get all the way up on that edge and do some, some great cutting with it. And there's nothing really there to catch anything and everything is straight and crisp and just like it's supposed to be. Um, so we're, we're, we're quite proud of the bevels and the execution of these blades. And I would say that's something that uh, across the board I've noticed personally with Spyderco and over the, the last few years of us sitting down and just talking knives at the different trade shows and stuff, um, you guys put a lot of attention and a lot of um, effort into your grinds, your bevels, how they perform, why they perform a certain way. Um, I, I, I dare say that Spyderco is, is leading, the, leading the knife world in a lot of that stuff um, just because I mean, we've, we've talked before where you guys have held up production of knives because the grinds just weren't quite right. Uh, so it's always cool to see a knife come out that, that hits that execution that you guys always aim for. Yeah, it's no different than a Rockwell. You know, you, yeah. can take a, you could take a perfectly good steel and, and poorly execute it and destroy what that steel could have been. Um, so from the thicknesses all the way through to the edge, you have to really pay attention to every aspect. So yeah, we take great pride in it. As another thing too, our compression locks are just getting better and better. They just drop and the action is wonderful. Um, the lockup is rock solid. Um, and so, you know, we continue to get better and better at our locks all the time. Yeah, well, and that's what, when you kind of alluded to the next one, that's something that I noticed specifically on this Yo Jumbo is this thing for such a big knife, this thing opens and closes like a dream. It is just buttery smooth. Yeah, um, I'm excited about this one. I'm a big fan of Mike Janich. I have been for a very long time. But the bigger you make knives, the, the more that those locks become critical. You know, you start putting a lot of pressure on a tip way out here, and it, it really puts a lot of pressure on that lock. And so when you're getting to this size, particularly in what Mike's trying to do with these types of knives, you know, the lock is definitely something we highlight, we test the heck out of. We really make sure it's going to be rock solid. It's not going to go anywhere. If you do like the Yojumbo, this one, or Yojimbo, this one's bigger. It's the Yojumbo. Um, <laughs> I don't have the Yojimbo next to me, but you're going to see it is, it is going to give you some better edge length. It's going to give you a little bit more reach. Um, again, we're quite proud of these, these um, very flat and crisp and pointy uh, Warren Cliffs. Uh, with Mike's designs, too, they don't slide around in the hand easily. He's got a great guard up here in the front. You can get your thumb here or even on top of it. Um, I encourage people to look into Mike Janich's um, teachings, uh, as, as well as Kelly, uh, Kelly McCann. Both of these guys are, are I, I believe, brilliant in their art form, and both knives do an excellent job of, of highlighting that art form. Um, this yeah. brings a lot that the, the Para family does, too. It's got nested uh, liners. It's got the compression lock. The, the G10 is a little bit more aggressive than you might find with most Spydercos. Um, we usually do a finer peel ply, so this is a little bit larger peel ply. It's really not going to slide around in the hand. It's going to accommodate large hands, which a lot of people that like these types of knives do have larger hands. It draws very quick with the clip. You know, it. Um, you know, Mike does a good job of paying attention to every detail, and this knife has been developed for for decades. Yeah, no, it's it's a tried and true. Uh, design for sure. Um, and that is something about that G10. It is, that was something when I first picked the knife up that I noticed is it is a little bit more aggressive. I don't think it's a pocket eater, but definitely a little more aggressive than I normally feel on a Spyderco. Um, I had a chance to, I think it was last year, I had a chance to uh, sit in and uh, go through a course, one of uh, Janich's courses. 
And it is really cool to go and learn just like the different principles and specifically, you know, he taught, obviously he spoke a lot on this knife because this is his specific design. And uh, it was neat to just get more insight into that, uh, into that world, into that part of the knife world, right? Yeah, you know, it, you, you never want to be in a situation that you would need a knife. Um, and most of these guys, it's, it's an absolute last resort. And most of these people they're teaching, you know, that's, that's the, the, the cause. It's, it's really a last resort. Um, but yeah, these guys are good at what they do. Um, I always encourage yeah. people to look into it. Yeah, it's, it's, it is cool stuff. Um, now this next one up, out of everything on the table, this next one up has probably made the most waves. So I'm, I, I was excited to finally be able to touch one. <laughs> but I'm also excited to hear more about it. So this is the Swayback. And uh, yep. what's the story on this thing? Uh, this is designed by Marcin Swish. Uh, we, we continue to work with him. We've done Technos, the Spidey Chef, um, the Bowie. He's done some beautiful designs with us. It's very much in his art, if you will. He does uh, three-dimensional titanium scales, the screw-together construction. Really what brings Marcin so nice in the popularity is that perfect balance you know it's not too big it's not too small it's it's got the right weight it's the good materials it's it's a beautiful balance in in, in most of his knives and so you know we're excited to bring this way back to the market again it's funny we have three warren cliffs in a row i'm a big warren cliff fan but uh you know these warren cliffs that come straight out it's hard to do then you have that swedge that comes across the top and then the grind line comes up and then it doesn't just shoot up and over the top of the spine. It hooks across that hole and then meets that, that false edge. And so it's, a, you know, it's just a beautiful combination. Oh, by the way, it's a hollow too. Some people are hollow, hollow fans. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, a big yeah. hollow fan as well. With spider yeah. codes, you get a lot of flats. Um, yep. This is, this is a beautiful hollow. So you're going to have that nice thin edge, that open construction. It's um, beautiful execution. Yeah, over yeah. travel stop, stainless interface. Yeah. yeah, the um, I, the thing that you pointed out about this that that really sticks out, and I didn't have words for it until you said it was the size, right? Like there is just something about the size. I know if I were to look at just the overall length, I'm sure I've held plenty of knives that are the overall length of this knife, but just the way it balances out in the hand, the way that it feels, the handle to blade ratio, there is something unique, something almost special about how it uh, kind of how it balances out. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, even the way it kind of hooks at the back of the handle. You yeah. Know, it kind of hooks yeah. back and hugs the back of your hand just right. Um, so, you know, it has, a lot, of, it has a, ni a lot of nice features. Always a pleasure working with Marcin. Cool. And, it, and it's also cool, again, I mean, that's, that's three knives in a row that, that are focusing on the amazing work that you guys do with your grinds and your sharpening and just the consideration for that, bla that type of blade geometry. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, and these are things, you know, the audience knows this, these are things that I say when, uh, you know, you're not, you're not on camera. <laughs> they're just, they're just facts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you, when you love knives, you love big knives, little knives, tactical knives, custom knives, yep. you love it all. Yep. Love it all. Exactly. And, uh, that actually brings us into uh, a little knife. So we've got a lightweight version here. Uh, what's the story on this? Uh, this is the dragonfly two. Um, if you remember the old one, it was a molded clip. We've gone to the wire clip, bi-directional texturing, screw together construction. Really, the Dragonfly has been a mainstay of Spyderco now for 25 years anyways. Um, if, you, if you are new to Spyderco, I recommend the Dragonfly. It's two and a half inches long, so you can carry it virtually anywhere that, um, that laws, laws where length is an issue. Most places have two and a half inches and under. This is highlighting a non-stainless steel called K390. Um, the Dragonfly comes in H1, it comes in VG10, it comes in a number of steels and colors. Um, K390 is super hard. Um, it's gonna keep an edge a long time, incredible wear resistance. It's gonna get a patina or, you know, it, it's, it's not nearly as corrosive resistance as some of these stainless steels, it's a non-stainless. But if you're looking for a really high performance steel up there with something like ZDP, you know, K390 is a super hard steel that's going to stay sharp a long time. And for a Dragonfly, it just brings a lot of horsepower to a lightweight, small package. For sure. Well, and I feel like the, the Dragonfly is one of those knives where, you know, it goes in a backpack or, I mean, some people I've seen carried on a keychain or whatever. And it's one of those knives where it probably doesn't see the sharpening stone often. 
so it's cool to know that this particular version is, is has a steel on it that doesn't need to be touched up nearly as often as maybe some others would. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that too. When you go to two and a half inch knives, you know, what what is that that thickness? And I'm gonna pre, I have two knives here. These are both two and a half inch knives. One is a much different thickness than the other one. You know, so these knives are gonna perform differently in the pocket and for the different tasks. You have an incredibly light and thin blade, but it's gonna get super hard. One of the things that I was excited with this knife is I was popping zip ties with it. And to take a, thi a thin little knife and just be able to pop zip ties with it, I was uh, quite impressed. And so K390 brings some um, fun elements to the table. Cool. Now, obviously, uh, talking, you know, you, you'd mentioned H1 Steel. This is a, a staple for Spyderco. You guys have done some amazing work with it. Um, if you guys watching haven't seen, we, we did a video on H1 a little while back. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so what's this uh, kind of, is this a new addition, a little bit of flavor change? What's going on with this? Um, yeah, you know, with H1 and our salt series, uh, this is just an addition to our salt series. They always get better and better. From the day you tested that damn thing in the lake to the one you have here, it will test better. Um, so cool. we're always doing CQI. <laughs> you might want to throw one in a lake again. Yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> having that said, um, we took our old Pacific. We up, upgraded uh, the ergonomics of it. It's got uh, black hardware, so it's going to be a little um, more resilient. It's uh, got bi-directional texturing, screw together construction. There's inserts that are put into the clip so that it really reduces the weight, but still gives you that four-way clip. If you were going to uh, compare this to the Endura, which is another stable knife in our in our line, this is a little bit thicker, but it also weighs a little less. And hmm. some people want a little bit more heft, and they do want the weight to be reduced. And so, if you're diving or you're working in a, wa a water atmosphere, that that bright yellow isn't going to lose its color and depth in different environments. The lightweight's going to feel great in the hand. The thickness is going to give you something that you can really work with. It's got a larger hole. It's got a stronger tip than the typical Endura. It's got a hollow grind. Um, so you're gonna get some real you know, power all the way through the blade. H1 is incredibly tough. Um, you're, you're really not gonna snap these things. I can't remember these things coming back snapped. So not only is the corrosion resistance incredible, um, but it's also one of the toughest steels out there. Um, so yeah, it's incredibly tough, incredibly um, corrosion resistant, and uh, and doesn't hold a bad edge. You know, when you get to yeah. rust-free knives, you make a titanium-bladed knife, it's not going to stay sharp very long. Yeah. And so that's that's the unicorn, if you will, for rust-free knives. Is something that doesn't rust and stays sharp, and add some toughness with it, it even gets better. Yeah, no, H H1 is an incredible steel. We. We really have done our homework quite a bit on on the H1 comparing it to other steels and stuff, and it really comes out on top. And that toughness is nice, especially if you're using it in diving applications, because uh, when you're diving, you never know. Like you might need something that can that can pry at something or that can take a beating while you're underwater. And uh, yeah, so it's that H1 is just in incredible steel for that application. Yeah, one of the things that we do when you're diving is you're banging on your tank so mm -hmm. you get people's yep. attention. Yeah, yep. things like that. You know, this this thing can take a beating. Cool. Um, now, uh, we have a special one at the very end that you're going to kind of give us a rundown on what that's going to be here very, very soon. Um, but before we do that, just a quick mention, you guys uh, have some awesome sprints coming out this year. And one of those is a little native sprint. So I guess kind of run us through what's what's the story on this sprint run here? Okay, I, I mean, I kind of previewed it a little bit, but you have a two and a half inch folder that's just packed with power, you know, with the compression lock in there. You know, that lock's not going anywhere. That deep pocket wire clip, the nested compression lock liners for a two and a half inch folder, you know, and now because it's a sprint and carbon fiber peel ply and S90V, you know, you're taking some of the best materials out there and you're packing it into a big punch. And so the yep. little native, it just does that. Um, I think it's about 1200 pieces made in the US. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. If you're looking for a, a, a little, a little compact knife with a lot of punch. It's tough to beat this one. For sure. And I have to say, I wish I wish everybody would do carbon fiber the way you guys have done carbon fiber on this. I'm not a big carbon fiber guy generally, uh, but this this uh, peel ply or this carbon fiber that has a little bit of texture to it is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, you know, a lot of people are looking for for color when they look for carbon fiber. You know, it looks got to be pretty, some lipstick and nylons. I mean, yeah. sometimes we want that, but uh, sometimes we want pure performance. And so when you get a lot of our carbon fibers, you know, they're not the prettiest carbon fibers in the world, but they're weaved with incredible um, precision. They don't have voids and they have beautiful peel ply with a lot of layers. And so not all carbon fibers are created equal, and uh, we take great pride in our carbon fibers. For sure. All right, now the last one that I have on the table is, this is a Blade HQ exclusive you guys have been working on for a while, and we've kind of kept it under wraps. We just recently kind of teased at it. And uh, so you guys here on YouTube, this is one of the, this is the first time this knife has been on camera. Um, and it's got some special construction stuff to it. So what we've got is we've got a paramilitary two, full copper construction, Rex 45 blade, it's dropping on Blade HQ this coming Tuesday, so June 30th, depending on when you're watching this video, at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. But Eric, walk, walk me through, why is this better than just, just a copper knife? <laughs> yeah, we were, yeah. <laughs> not all copper knives are created equal, you know, and copper is not an easy <laughs> material to work with. And if you're trying to make more than five of them and you're trying to make them all the same, that gets to be a challenge. And so, yeah, you know, the, the big thing with copper is trying to move these things to the facility without having them patina on you. I mean, people have to put on gloves just to touch them. So if you are a collector, realize that when you buy this thing, you got to take care of her. It's going to patina on you in a heartbeat. It has Rex 45 steel. Again, that's that's going to patina, too. Uh, some people think that after years, both the blade and the handle will look beautifully ugly. Um, I think some people <laughs> will try to keep theirs pristine. But when you're manufacturing, they all have to be done pristine. And that's that's a real challenge, especially with the Rex and everything else. We added a new lock to it. Um, it's not a new lock. It's still the compression, but the construction's a little different. Um, it's more like the Paramilitary 3 lightweight, if you're aware of that. It's basically where we just added a single bar for that lock rather than a much larger liner. Um, typically, you would do this to simplify the lock, uh, maybe reduce the weight. But with a copper knife, you are not reducing the weight at all. No, fact, there's no, there's no reducing. Adding this, <laughs> yeah, I think it made it heavier by adding the new lock configuration. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, if you're, it, it feels beautiful with the weight and that it has uh, with the execution. I'm really proud of everybody in the factory. It was not an easy knife to produce. I'm not excited to do any more of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if we can get through these um, and take care of them, guys, because these things are special. Yeah, for sure. And that's and that's that's the truth, guys. We've we've uh, we've known about this project for a long time, and Eric can attest they've been working on this project for a long time. But there were uh, hiccups along the way uh, that you guys handled beautifully, and the the knife has turned out just absolutely excellent. Uh, so yeah, so you guys will notice I am touching this one without gloves on. Uh, this is this is Blade HQ, so I'm allowed to get it dirty. This isn't one that we'll be sending out to one of you guys out there. So <laughs> um, I would I would wager, and this is this is just me wagering. This isn't a, a statement on either direction, but I would wager that uh, once once we've run through these, uh, there won't be any more of these being made. So <laughs> if you want to get one yeah. this Tuesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, June 30th. Uh, that's going to be the time because uh, I would say <laughs> Eric probably wouldn't be too excited to cycle these through again. <laughs> yeah, they're challenging. Um, yeah, we'll see. No promises, but um, yeah, no promises, we'll right? See. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, <laughs> a lot of really neat knives uh, for this uh, this fifth reveal. We uh, really appreciate your uh, you taking some time and and walking us through everything. Uh, it's a bummer that we weren't able to be together, but at least we get a chat, which was nice. <laughs> Um, and you know, whenever we end these things, we always ask, what do you, what do you got in your pocket today? Can you show us what's in your pocket today? Oh, um, this is, this is a Z-Wear Shaman in a uh, canvas micarta. We did some crew wares recently, uh, very popular. They went a little quicker than we had thought. Um, Z-Wear is a great steel that's very similar to crew wear. The chemistry is a little different, but it's very similar. Um, and then we're going to do a, a sprint run of this as kind of a cool. follow-up to the crew wear. But again, well, it's just... just a sprint, so this one will probably go too. <laughs> well, you just got everybody watching this salivating because uh, that is a beautiful knife. I didn't even get to touch one of the crew wear ones, so I'll have to see if I can find a way to get a Z-Wear one. <laughs> They're fun. It's a fun yeah. carry. Yep, I it recommend is. It's, it. a, it's a really cool knife. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, again, 
thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys, for following along. Uh, there'll be links down in the description to check out all these knives on bladehq.com, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure to check out our Spectacular Knife Weekend playlist here on YouTube. We're sitting down with some of your favorite makers and manufacturers. You can get all your knife needs at bladehq.com. Hit subscribe for more awesome knife content, and we'll catch you on the next one.